Listen, I want to give y'all some ways that you can identify a witch, all right? Identifying a witch, they always have chaos and confusion around them. You'll notice witches always have chaos around them. They're always involved in some kind of drama. And a lot of times they end up trying to pull you into that drama as well. You'll notice when you're around somebody that's operating in witchcraft, you always end up in their drama. You always end up in their chaos filled situations and you're looking around like, hey, I ain't got nothing to do with this. All right. They're always involved with gossip and slander. There's never unity or, or peace wherever there are witches. There's never unity or peace wherever there are witches. All right. They love to bring division. A lot of times witches will go to churches to bring division. If you've ever seen somebody in church who's always gossiping and slandering about everybody, they're always bringing division within the body of Christ. When you meet these people, you'll notice they'll gossip to you about somebody else. Now they go to the other person. They're gossiping to that person about you. And now they pin uh, that person against you. They love to pin people against each other. Now you got beef and you got an issue with this person all because of what this one person said. Because they take what you said and they twist it and manipulate it, take it out of context. And now you're hearing what you said in the mouths of all these different people. And you're like, hey, that's not what I said or that's not the whole thing. Now they create division. They are sent to divide and conquer. Witches always have draining spirits. They're like spiritual vampires. So when you talk to a witch or you talk to somebody who's operating in witchcraft and you feel drained, you feel mentally and emotionally drained, you feel tired, you leave that person, you just want to go to sleep. Or when you're having a conversation with that person, the longer the conversation goes on, you start to get headaches. You even start to get chest pains. You start to get confused. Your mind starts going blank. You actually start to forget what you wanted to say. That person has a spirit of witchcraft on them and they are feeding off of your anointing. Witches and warlocks, they have spirits that are specifically designed to drain anointed people. You know those people who say you have good energy. All right, that's usually the new age term. I don't like to use that term, but people who are anointed, people who carry the light of Christ, witches and warlocks will come to feed off of your anointing. Witches and warlocks, they have to feed off of a power source because they're not connected to the one true God. That's why witches and warlocks, they usually run in packs. They usually run in groups because they're like spiritual vampires. And you'll notice the more you become drained, the happier they seem like they are. The more you become drained and the more you suffer, it seems like the more they're thriving. Why? Because witches and warlocks, they, they thrive off of other people's anointings and they thrive off of other people's suffering. Another thing you'll notice about witches is they're always very messy. They love messiness. Like I said before, they love drama. OK, they'll alter and manipulate how other people see you. When I said they like to pin other people against each other, so they'll go to other people and they'll try to manipulate and alter the way that that person sees you. They like to alter that person's perspective of you to try to get other people to see you differently. All right. Witches wait in eager expectation. They wait eagerly and with excitement to get dirt on you. If they can get a little bit of dirt on you, they love that. They absolutely thrive off of scandal. Witches love to create scandal. Amen. They love to destroy people's identity so that they can destroy their influence and hopefully with the intention of destroying that person's destiny. They release the spirit of confusion through the spirit of gossip. Because when witches start gossiping and they start talking and slandering, everything that they say is always twisted and perverted. So it's a little bit of truth with a little bit of lies. So one witch can come within a group of people and create all this drama and chaos and confusion. And now all these people have an issue with each other because of this one person. It's completely demonic. And I want you all to understand something about witches. And this is why you need spiritual discernment, because witches and warlocks don't usually come as witches and warlocks. Witches and warlocks will usually come in disguise of the anointing. They will come in disguise of somebody who's highly anointed. They will come in disguise of somebody who's gifted and who's talented. A lot of times witches will smile. They'll be sweet. They'll have a kind heart. They'll have um, and they'll carry with them what seems like this great and vibrant personality, this bright and vibrant personality. But this is how they deceive people. They become a master of disguise. Why do they become a master of disguise? Because that's how they manipulate people and lure them into traps. That's how they cover up their true agenda. Amen. This is why witches can't stand prophetic people. Witches hate people who can see in the realm of the spirit because they know prophetic people can see and expose their agenda. 
So when they get around prophetic people, when they get around people who can see in the spirit, they start to manifest. They'll start to gossip about those people. That's why witches love to gossip about anointed people. Because when you're a prophetic person or you have a strong anointing on your life, when you're somebody who can see in the spirit, witches want to destroy that. They don't want you to prosper. So they get angry with you. They don't want to be around you. And they'll try to manipulate and alter the, other, um, alter the way that other people see you in hopes that those people will turn away from you as well. They can't stand prophetic people, all right? They don't want you to understand the spiritual realm because if you can understand the spiritual realm and you can see their agenda and expose it, guess what? They're not gonna thrive. This is why witches love to keep even Christians ignorant. And because they carry what seems like this bright and vibrant personality, I've even been in a lot of churches where there were witches that were thriving there and none of the Christians even knew it. They get past a lot of Christians because a lot of Christians do not have spiritual discernment. Another way you can identify a witch, and I want you to understand that a lot of people are going to get in the comments, and they're going to say, oh, this is just narcissism, bro. But I want you to understand there is a diabolical agenda behind narcissism, and there are many different spirits and demons that influence narcissism. So I want you to understand that manipulation and control itself is witchcraft. Manipulation, control, intimidation, and domination is witchcraft. And this is a diabolical practice that's actually been practiced for thousands of years before they ever called it narcissism. The term narcissism didn't even come into our world until probably the last, maybe less than a hundred years. But this is something that's been practiced for thousands of years, amen? All right, so another way you can identify a witch, you'll notice they go crazy once they realize they can no longer control you. Once they expose, once you expose their agenda and once you expose them for who they really are and once you set that boundary and you no longer allow them to control you, they go crazy and they start to manipulate you and gaslight you and make you feel like you're doing something wrong or like you're the bad guy. They'll even start going out of their way to do things to try to convince you again or try to make it seem like things were better with them. They'll try to convince you or make you feel like you're going to be nothing without them. You're never going to succeed without them. And that's like them trying to speak word curses over you to try to bind you. All right. They're trying to seal a curse over your life. That demon that needs to be worshipped will gather and even recruit other people. A lot of times they'll recruit their family members. A lot of times they'll even go to your family members. They'll start to lie on you. OK, they'll start to try to manipulate your family members to be on their side. And they want to do this to leave you without a support system. It's also designed to cause you to go crazy, right? Because once they already mentally break you, now they turned everybody in your life against you. It's designed to make you go crazy and leave you without a support system. And they'll manipulate the situation to even make you feel like you did something wrong and try to drag you back in and cause you to feel like you need to say sorry to them. Because what this does is it solidifies the curse over your life. That spirit of witchcraft is trying to yoke you back up with them because it solidifies and seals the curse over your life. This is also mind control, right? Playing mind games with you to the point where you feel like you're going crazy or you end up actually becoming convinced like, hey, did I, did I do something wrong? Maybe I do need to apologize to this person. This is called witchcraft. So the first key to being able to identify a witch is understanding the nature of a witch, how they operate, how they function, how they move. You need to understand how they operate if you want to be able to identify if you are encountering a witch. And you need a strong prayer life. Y'all need to fast and pray and read the Bible so that you have spiritual discernment. Amen. Because understand again, witches, a lot of times these people, when you first meet them, they do not come off like this. All these things that I just explained to you, this whole list of, of ways to identify a witch, they don't come off like this. They will come off as kind-hearted people. They might even give you gifts. They might even praise you. They might flatter you. All right. They might make you feel like a million bucks at first, but it's to seduce you and get you to come under their spell. It's to get you to trust them. A witch will always try to get you to trust them first before they actually push their agenda. They'll come off as somebody who has a bright and vibrant personality. Amen. So be able to test the spirit and the agenda that they're operating in. I love y'all and God bless.